We got everyone, so let's not waste any moments. Let's just get this game going. Uh, this, uh, welcome to the call. This is the Common Stack Ask Me Anything community call with the Commons Prize finalists. Uh, we have five finalists, but unfortunately, only one, uh, one of them couldn't make it because they're in a, a conference in Berlin, the DSI conference, very cool conference, especially for the AI Commons. Uh, but uh, we do have four out of the five finalists. And so I'd like to start just by letting them each introduce themselves. Uh, maybe I'll toss it to you, John, since you've got the biggest smiling face. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and refi comments? And to you and Sam, for sure. Um, love the good vibes here, everybody. My name is John Elliston. I uh, used to be the head of growth at Toucan Protocol and recently left to explore what stewarding the regenerative finance movement through refi doubt could look like. Um, came across this opportunity with a friend and I've just so enjoyed learning about the process you guys have gone through with Token Engineering Commons. And yeah, this is blowing my mind. So uh, it's been a great process so far and all the best to whoever ends up taking this forward. And uh, yeah, power to people on the planet. It's good to be here. Nice. And could you in introduce refi Commons a little bit more and, and what your, your thoughts are with that? Maybe really in 30 seconds. So um, ReFiDAO is, you know, emerged out of this kind of explosion of experimentation at the intersection of climate action and Web3. I started creating a list of, you know, who's doing what in this space back in September. There was like 25 projects and now there's almost 220 that have come out. And, you know, Flow Carbon just announced a 70 million Series A. There's a huge amount of attention in this space. But it's also putting, you know, the economy of regeneration and planet positivity at odds with this extractive economy that we have. And so the idea of creating a commons that can align incentives between people and the planet and to be able to really coordinate people moving forward towards creating public goods that take care of this issue and transition to a regenerative economy is kind of at the heart of what we're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, there's more that others I'm sure will have to say. And thanks for giving a little space for that. Thank you, John. That was great. Uh, really nailed it. Uh, and and I guess the next smiling face I see is Will, although I can barely see it through that beard, man. Jeez. Uh, I don't think you've shaved since I saw you three years ago. It looks great, though. Love it. Maybe you could introduce yourself, your partner in crime, and uh, also talk about, uh, hey, uh, and talk about grassroots economics comments. Sure. You guys hear me okay? I hear you great. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, it's been fun to be part of this. It's been fun to kind of get back together with a common stack. Um, it's been it's been a while, and um, getting into the augmented bonding curve again, and looking at sort of the DAO space and how that can relate to sort of continuous funding, and also sort of divesting from you know U.S. dollar backed currencies and these different kind of you know uh, coins into uh, commons based vouchers and tokens and different types of credit obligations and stuff so i've been i've been sort of enjoying that process going from you know like what we need kind of on the ground like right now and we have like a, a backlog of like 60 more community currencies for the next few months and we just need to create sort of voting systems and and kind of get those going in a different way but then at the same time there's a lot of interest in supporting these types of commons um, and you know how do we actually uh, how do we do that in a way that's not just like grants and you know these, how do we create more continuous cycles and that's excited about it all and and regardless of Commons Prize and whatnot like super excited to just continue going down this path and learning from what you guys have done. Nice and and who's with you? Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Jambi. I work with Wheel. And happy to be here. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks, thanks, Will. I can introduce her better than that. She, she, Jambi runs like all of our field operations and uh, is basically our coordinator across right now, like Kenya and Cameroon and starting in South Africa. So she, she wears oh. a lot of hats. Yeah. Oh, wow. Amazing. Thank you so much for both coming. Uh, it's really a pleasure to have you. And a pleasure to have grassroots economics, of course. Community currencies done with bonding curves and, and it's just it, at least and to see how it's evolved, incredible. Uh, and also I see Joseph uh, showing his face, smiling face. Uh, do you have, uh, would you like to introduce Precious Plastics and yourself? 
I hope um, everyone can hear me okay. I'm, I'm actually calling in from Refi Spring, Portugal. Um, we're at the traditional dream factory. I'm inside of an old chicken farm. And uh, it's hot as shit here, so <laughs> I'm doing my best. Um, but yeah, my name's Joseph Klatt, and uh, I lead our core development team at Precious Plastic. And yeah, we're just yeah excited to get into this Web3 space, and it's been really fun going through this um, process with the common stack. Love, love the, the tools and the ideas that you guys are putting out. It really applies to us. And yeah, we're just interested in, so Precious Plastic is an open hardware platform that enables people to start their own recycling projects around the world. And we're all about how do we, you know, how do we tackle the, the plastic waste problem through like a myriad of solutions and new products and uh, really a bunch of tooling. And we are really interested in how do we take our existing like open source commons and our existing community and how do we exit to community? So how do we hand over like govern governance rights over our operating system and enable them to drive the future development and the future governance of this commons so that we can develop it in the in the way uh, the best way possible so that the people who are closest to the ground can contribute to to that protocol um, in a, in governance so yeah we're it's been yeah a great learning process we're we're not web3 new so yeah it's, we're learning a lot through the whole thing so we've just been been um, happy to be a part of it and I'm super stoked on all the stuff I'm learning about here at uh, Refi Portugal so I couldn't be more excited to be honest wow thank you so much joseph we're, we're excited to have you too it's a super cool project and actually wow surprise guest uh richard so good to see you thank you so much for coming in you're representing the ai commons we got everybody here uh so alga vera ai commons richard would you be uh kind enough to introduce yourself and also uh what your plans are with the commons yeah, for sure. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I'm at DCI Berlin this week, so I'm also on my phone. So um, can everyone hear me okay with these earphones? Yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah, so hi, I'm Richard from Algovera, and we're trying to build the AI commons. So I have a background in like machine learning. I've worked in universities and startups and, and tech companies. And I, you know, I saw a lot of like issues with the organizational structure and this kind of top-down approach to AI projects, which often results in machine learning engineers working on applications that aren't necessarily good for the world, from things like surveillance to, to ad clicks to attention engineering. And so we want to create this kind of decentralized research organization where people can, you know, work on the AI projects and applications that they're most passionate about. And for that, you know, we provide funding. Um, and our idea is that if we empower people to work bottom up and help them to build these and deploy these applications, that they'll generally work on things that are good for the world instead of, you know, all of these things that machine learning engineers are currently working on, like surveillance. And so, yeah, I think it's a really important issue in the world, like AI governance. Everyone always talks about jobs being automated away. Um, and this governance of AI is in the hands of, of less and less people. And so what we want to like really kickstart is this decentralized AI community where governance is more decentralized among like smaller groups. Um, and yeah, just put the power of AI in the hands of more and like generate value for, for more people. Incredible. Uh, thank you so much for coming and, and, and applying to be part of the commons. Uh, and, and this, we have such amazing projects here and we have one more. Uh, Gravity DAO, uh, very close, closely knit community. Uh, Wonka, do you want to introduce yourself and Gravity DAO? Yeah, thanks Griff. Um, well, my name is Juan Carlos and first of all, I am super excited and uh, it's amazing to be participating and sharing the stage with projects like Precious Plastic, Grassroots, AI Commons, and RefiDAO. All are super cool projects. Um, well, I am from Colombia, and my passion has always been how to deal with conflict in a transformative way. How to transform what uh, you, when you stomp uh, into a rock in your road, how can you learn from that, and how can you uh, become more competent on um, the experience of bumping with rocks in the road. And, like, I find that uh, DAOs and all organizations can benefit, um, and all individuals can benefit from uh, these uh, tools and this understanding of how to manage uh, not only individually conflict um, with yourself, but also conflict with others. 
And um, we think that that um, interest and field of conflict management can become a commons because there's a lot of things that we can do from it. And right now we are like training and providing mediation uh, for organizations. But uh, we think that our scope can, can grow and that's um, why we're participating here um, to become a commons. So cool. Yeah, Gravity now has had uh, a huge impact on the token engineering commons and uh, Giveth and many projects within our space. So, so we're very happy to see you also make it into the running. These are the five nominees and we're so lucky to have all of them. Uh, and uh, But before we get into the question and answer section, which uh, please, if you have any questions, please consider adding them to the Commons Prize channel. It's just above the Community Hall uh, channel right here. It has a little trophy, so you can see it on the left in Discord. It's just right there. And add any questions you have for any of the comments or all of the comments into that channel, and uh, we'll, we'll, give it, we'll give it to them. But before we get into the question and answer section, we want to talk about like the Commons Prize in general and give everyone an overview. So maybe I'll pass it to Tam to talk about the timeline and uh, other issues. Yeah, I'm going to be real short so that we can get to the heart of this. Which, uh, but just for everyone who is here and everyone who is watching, we're now in rounds two, the finalists uh, vote. So we have five amazing finalists, mm -hmm. uh, 36 nominations, uh, the people who are in the call today. And the voting will end on uh, May 31st at 11.59 p.m. EST, so New York time. So all votes have to get in before uh, midnight New York time uh, on May 31st. Uh, and then on June 1st, the uh, winner will be awarded the prize. Uh, so voting is happening on Snapshot. It's quadratic rank choice voting. Um, so it's rank choice voting for preference and quadratic to uh, emphasize individual perspectives and uh, dampen um, uh, the outsized um, uh, the outsized uh, influence that whales or large token holders would have if it was one person, one vote. Uh, I'm sorry, one person, one token, one vote versus quadratic. And uh, I'm going to pass this to Griff to explain the UX bug. Uh, real time continuous voting is complicated and it's really meant, ranked choice voting isn't really meant to display this. So he's going to talk about some of uh, the results and why we should be ignoring them. <laughs> Uh, there, is, yeah. there is an important note in here just to ignore this results box here and vote for your preference because uh, it does not really reflect the reality. And I'll pass to Griff to explain more. Yeah, I mean, in short, blockchain voting sucks. It's showing real-time results and it's not anonymous. We all know this, or at least we should know this. Like, voting in the real world generally is anonymous and you don't know the results while you're voting. Uh, there's good reasons for that. Uh, snapshot and blockchain voting in general kind of says, well, blockchain is public, so let's make the best of everything and show everybody the, the results so there's not an information disparity, which so it's the best we can do. But with uh, especially with ranked choice voting, ranked choice voting doesn't expect you to see real time results. And these results are really bad. Uh, uh, this is totally this is just horrible like in total there are 3,000 votes and you can see that there was 1.6 thousand votes going th that have the first place is gravity and 1.4 thousand uh, votes that show it's just a bold lie uh, actually there's 3,000 total votes and if you scroll down and look at the 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 actual results you can see even right here precious plastics has 209 first place votes and 200 first place votes in the second the top uh, of the top three votes they have like 400 right there so it's really these 3,000 votes uh, first place votes are spread amongst all five candidates and uh the 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 one vote uh can easily sway and kick the top two out of this and show another two uh as first and second place it's it's uh it's actually a very tight race right now and uh i would strongly recommend that you ignore this box you vote your preference and and see what the final results will be at the end uh if there is um i'm not i don't think it's worth explaining how ranked choice votes work voting works uh all you need to know is the best strategy will always be to vote your preference 
and that the result box doesn't matter, especially since people can even change their votes during the voting. So, uh, so yeah, let's just get, so let's, uh, that was a really fast overview. Thank you, Tam. Uh, and thank you, every, thank you, everyone. Make sure to get out there and vote, vote as soon as you can. And you can remember, you can change your vote later if, if you want. Uh, let's just dive into, into the questions. So because there's five people and we have 45 minutes left, basically, I'm going to be a little judicious with a timer. I'm sorry. Uh, so, I, uh, but this is just to keep things fair. I know everyone wants to gab. I know I do, that's for sure. So I'm going to just, uh, put a timer on for every question. And some, most of these questions are being, going to be passed around to everybody. So, and um, feel free to help us save time and pass to each other. Okay, uh, if you don't know who to pass to, you can just pass it to me when you're done, or I'll take it from you if you run out of time, and I'll pass it around. Uh, but so we can just, uh, but if you can save time in these questions, pass to each other. So uh, I want this first question is like a, is a, a two minute question. And it's kind of more general, like, how do you expect to use the commons uh, that that you'll get out of the Commons Act? So I'm going to put two minutes and I know Will has some really good question answers for this, so I'm going to start with you. Uh, Will, how do you plan on using the actual commons, uh, like the augmented bonding curve and conviction voting uh, set up? Yeah, well, I mean, I think we just, there's a lot to discuss around it, but I, I like the idea that you've got, you've got voting shares on a common pool, and let's say that X die, that X die is going out by vote, I mean, it, there can be a trickle like dividends as well coming out, but there's there's a, a, a vote on pool that, that's going to invest in capacities. Let's say that's building a well for a commons or building them is around. For our form token, it doesn't have to be the form, is the community inclusion. We're basically to with, which are basically vouchers and against futures. So there's a strong legal contract behind them. So it's like a bus ticket or uh, you know airtime credit, right? Those are those are basic basic um, uh, pr producer credits or mutual credits. So so based on that capacity, you're increasing their capacity as a commons, and that increases the amount of credit that they can produce as well. Some of that comes back into the pool now. That actually that's being voted on the DAO pool. And that then can be used to connect liquidity pools between, let's say, XDAI and those commons. And then the revenue on those liquidity pools, again, goes back into the DAO. And so I'm just I'm trying to imagine a space where we're in one side, we're divesting in a way from XDAI, but we're also creating a network that's connecting XDAI into all, all these other commons. And, and ideally, you know, producing dividends and returns for people on that. And then also pushing our donors and humanitarian sector into that structure. So you're not just like dumping you're part of a of an organization that's you know invested in okay. commons and building networks between commons. Pause, and I'll pass to uh, John. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, it's been great diving deeper into the mechanisms. I think there's kind of two parts. One is the process, which I feel like is this brilliant way to set this kind of cultural foundation upon which you can then. Um, it really encourages specific behaviors that result in coordination towards this shared objective. And I think um, I've been really seeing the two primitives we've been thinking about now as kind of like iterations upon the concepts you guys have already done. So the kind of trusted seed um, is really like evolving into a refi ID and becoming actually something that's permissionless. And right now you have this need to accept a trusted seed application because of you know, the question of are they aligned with these values? But if you then connect this reef ID to this second primitive of a kind of impact gauge, which is kind of like an evolution on the augmented bonding curve, it's basically saying, how can you really create a, a pluralist approach towards the currencies that you can accept instead of just wrapped X die? If you can you know, allow list specific currencies to be deposited um, in exchange for this you know, currency of commons, you can basically build a kind of dynamic index fund for a movement that's directed at a specific shared objective. And so I think um, I'm sort of looking at it like that, which is to say, we'd use these particular primitives to go through a process to get this entire regenerative finance movement, which 
you know, has the biggest challenges of our time, which is, you know, how do you effectively redesign money to heal the earth, um, to fulfill its goal and coordinate across dimensions of people in carbon, people who are working on restoring ecosystems and people who are working on, you know, really hard problems of building communities of care on the ground, who are actually doing this work of regeneration. Um, so that's kind of a thought there. And, it, you know, I posted a kind of funny comment in there just saying, hey, what if we could mash it all together? And I, I mean that somewhat in jest and somewhat in earnest to say, like, it'd be super sweet to see, you know, all these different members who are trying to tussle with different models to work together towards the good of people on the planet. Nice. Uh, well, I, I can pass it to you. Let, let's, let's throw it over to Wonka. How, how do you expect to use the, the commons? Um, well, we are, have learned a lot from the TEC, and I think that conflict management uh, is also a field of knowledge, the same as token engineering. And um, I think that gravity can become a shilling point for the conflict management field um, in the Web3 space. And will be able to provide services to other DAOs and um, contribute not only for the uh, inner well-being of the communities and providing the service of, of conflict management, but also helping um, with the relationships between DAOs. And um, yeah, I, I also think that um, we can um, tribute to the cultural change that we want to see um, in the house um, as, a, as a consequence of, of, of participating in these new institutions. So um, yeah, we think that, that this impact would be really cool um, to help to implement the Ostrom principles, especially uh, the ones that talk about monitoring, um, sanctions, and low um, cost access to conflict management. So that would be really cool to help um, to, to um, make conflict management as basic infrastructure for these type of organizations. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say. I don't know if that's Yeah, that. you had eight seconds left, but uh, I can pass it for you. Let's, let's throw it to Joseph from Precious Plastics. Yeah, so the way um, we're thinking about this, number one is about developing a continuous funding model for our project and our mission, which is to end plastic waste. So, yeah, recently I had to like set up our uh, new legal structure. And, you know, it depends on your economic activities, like how you're getting funded, uh, depending on how you're going to create your legal structure. And it's like, we fit in no boxes. And it's like, yeah, it's social enterprise. We'd also take donations. It's like, we're not, we don't fit in that world. And um, so we need a continuous funding model that's based on our ability to uh, effectively develop solutions. And that's what's so cool about, I think this, this model is, we would see our community uh, deciding on what things that need to be developed to end plastic waste, that then bringing more people into the commons if those techniques are effective because people wanna use them. Because right now, all of our development is done by our, our core team, you know, a small group of people. And of course, we talk to our community and ask them, but it's, it's centralized, you know. And I think in order to solve a big problem, you need a decentralized development path. The other half is, yeah, is about governance. We want our community to be able to really decide exactly how these funds are spent that we are able to, to generate with, the, uh, with our comments. Because we really view it like a permaculture um, food forest. We want it to be a, a contained system that creates value for itself and has control over itself and doesn't require external input always. We want it to be funded and governed by our community. I'll pass it along. Nice. Uh, Richard, uh, do you want to take it for AI comments? How are you guys going to use the comment stack? Perhaps yes, please. Process? So, yeah, how, how are we going to use the comments? So, like we, um, so at the moment we're already, you know, funding independent AI teams in our ecosystem through our grants program. Um, so we've run two rounds of that so far and funded twelve teams. And we're going to be announcing our third round shortly. Um, and so, like at the moment, uh, the funding for that grants comes from uh, other grants that we get. And what we'd love to do is like um, use tokenomics uh, to, you know, start to crowdfund and uh, 
use this money to fund different AI startups. Um, and also, we think what would be really cool in the future is to like, because some of these AI projects might, you know, generate some sort of value as well. Um, and so what we would love to do is like channel any value that's created from these AI projects back into the community to fund more projects. And so you have this feedback loop of, you know, AI generating value for the world, which brings it into the treasury. And then that can be used to fund more uh, different AI projects. And so at the moment, all of this is kind of ad hoc. You know, we're using lots of different tools across the board from like Snapshot, Snapshot for voting. We're using Dow House to set up our independent AI teams. Um, and so it's just a load of different tools. And like, we think that, you know, uh, with, with the AI Commons, we can consolidate some of those tools into, into one place um, and, yeah, really, like, uh, help us to, like, fund more AI projects um, through, like, the power of tokenomics and also, you know, give more legal protection to the independent AI teams because uh, these legal wrappers are something um, that we've been looking into a little bit, but it's still a problem that we need to be solved. And so, yeah, it's really important to protect these teams from uh, unlimited liability as well. So these are all areas is that we think, think the AI comments can, you know, help us to achieve our goal AI teams and more AI. Things for all four problems uh, using AI. Because it's a decentralized system as well, you know, we can solve more problems potentially. Like I think the, the distribution of problems in the world, it has a long tail, right? And I think a decentralized one is that a tech company solve. Hell yes. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, and uh, I, I, we're going to go into a, a more of a rapid fire approach. Uh, I have some questions for everybody, uh, and we'll just pass it around. And then we'll make sure to save time for uh, lots of individual questions uh, at the end. But uh, first, like with just just one minute on the clock, uh, I'm going to throw it to John first. Uh, so, uh, what are two metrics? that are most relevant to measure impact for your comments. Sorry, John. To yeah, put you on uh, <laughs> no, it's cool. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, so our, our approach is to allow the members of this community to define what impact is through these particular gauges over a period of time. And that creates a really flexible adaptive system upon which you can create feedback loops to determine what on-chain activities are resulting in off-chain outcomes. And I think um, this is a really interesting model because the impact space has really struggled to determine what is impact and how do you measure it. And so if you create a kind of decentralized framework that um, people can you know, use conviction voting to say this is what's impactful and therefore this is the mechanism by which we should allocate and issue this currency, I think it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, there's total value locks, there's number of protocols, there's number of new startups, you know, um, there's total Punnage, there's a lot of it you can look at, but I think the flexible adaptive approach is quite an interesting one, and that's a minute. So I'll pass Whoa. to uh, you, Will. <laughs> yeah, Will, uh, two metrics that would measure the impact of your comments. Um, I, well, we've got, I mean, for me, there's um, the volume of trade and number of users within that comments is is really a, a big one for us i mean but let me just two okay hold on hold on um so so uh, i mean generally measuring utility is i mean I, I think clustering coefficients are really cool so you're looking at like cycle centrality that's one really cool metric so you're looking at like how connected is this comments into an ecosystem right how how much does it touch all these other ones so cycle centrality is a metric. And um, I would also just say, yeah, I, Javi, what's a good metric for us in terms of one, one number that strikes you for like what's going on right now? Like for example, in, uh, in communities that you're in right now, um, it's common with more of a mutual service uh, provision, oh. which means um, these people can buy from one another. Yeah. Therefore, um, you can see this growth in that community it's like the market cap yeah. you know like literally how much utility is there you know and so like our typical like city village it's like five hundred dollars okay i gotta cut you off we're over we're over okay. i wanted to give her a chance to talk but, but we are over so uh let's throw it to wonka what are two uh two metrics to measure the impact of the gravity comments 
Yeah, I would say one would be number of DAOs talking actively about conflict management, having or developing uh, um, a culture um, regarding conflict management as common infrastructure inside their organization. And the other one would be the number of cases managed uh, by gravity by providing the mediation service to other organizations. Nice. Uh, do you want to do you want to pass it? Um, yeah, I would uh, like to pass it to the precious plastics. Thanks. Yeah, there's kind of two um, approach approaches that we have to our um, mission of ending plastic waste. One is recycling the existing amount of plastic waste that's floating around out there. So we would we measure that by kilos of plastic recycled. It's kind of uh, by our community. It's kind of discreet. And then the secondary element is about preventing future uh, plastic waste from being created in the first place. And that's ultimately where we should be going. And that's more difficult to ascertain that metric. But I would say the amount, a lot of our community does education. So the amount of people who are, have been touched in workshops or um, educated to by our community, I think would be our secondary measure, metric for getting the spread spreading awareness around how do we prevent plastic waste from the, in the first place? How do we stop making plastic crap, basically? That's it. Pass, pass it to AI Commons. Cool, thanks. Um, yeah, so two metrics. Uh, I think like one of the metrics would be something like the number of resources shared between independent AI teams. Like we want to really create a positive sum environment for, for different AI startups so that they can collaborate together to solve more problems. And so resources shared could be things like, you know, data sets that um, uh, might be useful for one AI project, might be useful for another, or algorithms, or even like compute resources and, and things like this. Uh, we want to create this collaborative computing platform where all of these AI teams can work together in a positive sum environment, which is very different to the current uh, way that AI is done in a, in a zero sum environment. Second one, um, so I always think the best optimization function that we can have for AI is the number of problems that it solves for people. Like AI should be working for us to solve as many problems as possible. And so it might be a little bit difficult to estimate how many problems have been solved, but um, but yeah, I think like that's the that's the main goal of the AI commons is to make people's life better and easier. Amazing. Oh wow, you guys have good metrics. Uh, let's 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 throw it to another one, uh, which is a little more common specific. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it to Precious Plastics this time, put you on the spot. Uh, the, the launch of a, uh, how do you expect, who do you expect to earn reputation? So, okay, in the Commons stack approach, we have this thing called a hatch. And the hatch splits, uh, the hatch collects money from, uh, from people who want to support this financially, but it also distributes tokens to those people who support it financially and to people who have reputation in the system. Uh, who do you expect uh, to earn tokens in the hatch via impact hours, a, a reputation token in precious plastics, uh, or versus uh, also who will actually put money in the hatch? Who are these people? Uh, and I'll start the timer. So the way that we usually develop our projects is in versions, like kind of like Uniswap version one, version two. We have also Precious Plastic version one, two, three, four. And I would see um, this project being building our next version of Precious Plastic and that really being the hatch. So we would get a bunch of our community to come together, uh, probably physically, maybe even at the traditional Dream Factory in Portugal, um, to build out the, the tooling for our commons and build up the whole system. So I would imagine our, our community literally contributing to the hatch. Uh, so some contributors, whether it's 30, 40 people, I don't know exactly. Uh, and then our core team as well would contribute to the hatch. And they, we should yeah, distribute reputation for that because they're contributing. Um, as well, and then from a financial point of view, yeah, I would uh, some of our core team, I would imagine, putting in some funds and then also... Yeah, more like philanthropists who have supported us throughout the years to um, input in the hatch. Is that my time? Yeah. That's your time, yeah. That, I was going to see if I would pass it. I pass it to John. Yeah, there we go. It's all good. 
Thanks, Joseph. Um, love that you're enjoying the TDF, man. Uh, so yeah, Refi Spring is kind of one of our on ramps at Refi DAO, and so we'd be looking to have you know participants of Refi Spring events be able to participate in the Hatch. But we're also building um, Refi fellowships with all like the core climate tech um, education job sites like Climate Base and Terra Do and Working Climate. Um, and then we'd be looking to have you know the 50 founders in our Refi founder circles participate in the Hatch. And there's this growing movement of um, venture capitalists that are just focusing in this intersection who've expressed, you know, pretty strong verbal capital commitments. And so I think um, participating in the hatch, we'd, we'd have a pretty space to, to move this forward. And I just love that this gives us a really structured process to do that. Um, this consideration also around like token swaps with the main protocols like Toucan, and Flow Carbon, and Rebound and Moss, but um, that's kind of... Yeah, a another layer of abstraction. So um, those are the, the initial thoughts we'd have. And ultimately, we're going to build it together. So I'm sure we can find a good solution as a, as a collective team. Um, I'll pass it to you, Wonka. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I think that we would um, give um, impact hours to the people participating in the Graviton trainings. Um, because we deliver POAPs on, on them and that way we can track somehow some participation in our educational activities. Also, um, people who um, uh, take the cases or people who participate in our coordination activities or our educational activities. Um, and I think that um, for the hatch phase, we could also um, gather uh, funds from DAOs that would be interested um, in this development of conflict management uh, for the Web3. Um, I think that for the level of specialization in DAOs, um, it, it's difficult to all DAOs. So um, with this, we would ha um, aim to receive funding from many DAOs for this common good that can serve for uh, multiple them of them. And yeah, I'll pass to grassroots. Well, we I we uh, a lot of sort of that are that often puts money into stuff like this. So I think that would be really exciting to 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 start moving the humanitarian space a little bit into much more sustainable systems where they're really invested uh, ecosystems. I think that's exciting, and I think um, just in general, um, I think there's a lot of ESG types of investors and whatnot that really want to see you know commons based instruments uh, being created. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I also think that like the if we're looking at this as sort of like a divestment kind of system as well, where you're you're including the commons themselves, well, they have they have their own vouchers or their own tokens, and if they're putting into the pool as well, that should be also you know a contribution counted. So I think that's a really cool way to look at it. So I'm if I'm a donor of Red Cross. It's like I'm coming into an agreement where we in the community get a vote. On what's going on, I think it'd be super powerful. And yeah. so sorry, I, the the timer went off. But uh, thanks, thanks, Will. Uh, and let's see, did Richard? Did did you get? You haven't gotten to go yet, right? Uh, no, who I'm are the hatchers? Who, who gets reputation and and effectively earns tokens through reputation? And who puts money into your AI comments? Cool. Yeah. So um, the great thing about DAOs is that they're without borders, right? And we have a lot of overlaps with a lot of different communities. Um, and so, for example, like we were we were born through the kernel accelerator, and um, so that's what like that's kind of baked into our DNA. They're they're a great community, and um, also like we've uh, we've been funded by the ocean ecosystem for quite a while. So like we're quite close with that ecosystem. A lot of different you know uh, independent projects in the ocean uh, ecosystem as well. We work like very closely with them on on different projects. Um, we also like um, are quite close with people in the uh, protocol labs ecosystem. You know, we've got we just got our first Filecoin grant recently, and we're like working closely with a few different projects in uh, in there as well. Um, 
we're also like you know in the DSI DSI world now as well, um, and you know uh, just gave a decentralized AI workshop in Berlin. Um, so we we uh, we would hope that like a lot of DSI projects would be you know interested in contributing uh, or maybe even investing, um, and also like in the decentralized AI space, which we're trying to uh, bring a community to, community together. So we've. We know like you know a handful of decentralized AI projects that are quite fragmented, but trying to bring them together. Okay, I think that's my time. Yep, that's it. Uh, thank, thank you all so much. We hit everyone. I, I lost track. I think we hit everyone. So I'm gonna uh, yell at me if we didn't, but I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is uh, and actually go into uh, yeah. Okay, we'll keep it a minute for this one. Uh, do you have? But if you don't need a minute, please pass it quickly. Uh, are there any potential issues that you think will make your commons fail or block the launch of a com of your commons? And uh, this one, I'm going to throw to Wonka first. Well, I think maybe, um, but it's something that I can see from from a lot of these ideas that we want to do something so big and something so impactful to the world that sometimes uh, those things are are massive and and that sometimes they take a, a long term um, i mean bios is something that uh, we have seen in human history um, and in our present and something that will not be um uh, um, like left out of our culture so easily, but um, if we can contribute to making a less violent world and a more comprehensive um, DAO infrastructure with more legitimate systems and more um, uh, understanding of of, of 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 the conflict that we all live, um, that's that's it for me. And I'll pass it to um, the AI Commons. Yeah, and the question again is, uh, is there any blockers that would stop you from launching this comments or anything that would make your comments fail? Um, sure, yeah, so uh, yeah, like there's there's quite a lot of uh, details um, that I, I have a good uh, uh, understanding of, but not like not full understanding of, I would say, and things like the legal wrapper, for example. Um, so like I know with the Swiss Association, the, the organization needs to be a not-for-profit. Um, and so like, uh, we want to explore whether we can be not for profit, um, but also um, generate some value through the AI projects, but where that stays within the organization. In other words, no dividends are paid to like token holders, but that the value generated by certain AI projects, which might happen, will be fed back into the organization to further develop more AI projects. My understanding is that you can do that with a not for profit, um, but you know I'm not a lawyer, and like that's something that I'd really like to explore um, because. You know, uh, as far as I've seen in the Common Stack Simulator, um, the the funded projects uh, aren't necessarily expected to take in value, and so that's that's like a, a slight detail, a modification that I'd love to uh, that, that we would need to explore. Oh, sorry. Let's start over to Will. Okay, I'll jump in there. Um, I think one of the things for us is like if. Um, let's say Precious Plastics, you know, develops a, a a set of like service tokens, you know, that are redeemable for recycling services. That's exactly what we do in villages, you know, to help them create some kind of utility token that starts to flow into the ecosystem. And if that's, you know, so like the, what we're sort of imagining is like there's a fund that we are voting on that is going into supporting Precious plastics, for instance, right? So we say, okay, great. We want to increase your capacity, precious plastics. Here's these funds. In return, you're going to increase the capacity, the number of, of the precious plastic tokens that you're created, right? Because you have a bigger capacity now. The fund gets some of those tokens, right? And you would also get some votes fund as well for that. Um, what's what's going to stop that from working is you can't come up with a set of like common voting tools, but also like standards on what constitutes kind of credit worthiness or a good call. So I feel like that's kind of like coming up with those standards is really important. Um, and I feel like we're not quite there. And, and doing some small pilots of that, I think is really, really important. Um, and just pushing forward on that, yeah. Nice. Thanks, Will. Uh, and I'll throw it over to 
Uh, are, are there any blockers or any things that may stop you from launching the commons? I think, um, you know, there's a lot of volatility in the space. Crypto climate is super new. Vera just came out with an announcement a couple of days ago, which is incredibly antagonistic. Um, and yeah, on the other hand, the White House is, you know, asking people to show use cases for, you know, crypto and climate. Um, the collapse of like UST has shown that things which can be hype, you can easily fall apart quickly. Um, I'm definitely worried about, yeah, just kind of the short term volatility of this space that could affect the ability to raise funding and kind of like maintain confidence um, within the movement. But there's also, you know, other vectors that would be encouraging. So I'd say, yeah, volatil market volatility and downward price pressures, which would just make it harder to, to thrive. Um, regulation could be an interesting vector and just like the legacy space becoming, you know, increasingly antagonistic. Yeah, not anything like block directly, but those are hindrances and obstacles that you need to overcome. Um, but this is a 28 year journey to 2050. So I'm, I'm in it for the long run. If it doesn't happen in the next nine months, whatever. Nice. And then Joseph, you want to finish this off? Are there any blockers to launch in the comments for you? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge for us is a, it's a storytelling and a branding perspective from our, for our community, because it, you know, I know you guys are crypto people, but like our community is environmentalists and we, you know, most environmentalists don't have a good view of crypto. So that is a challenge for us. So, you know, trying to get in transitioning into this space, we need to be able to appropriately you know, address that issue and educate in a way that makes, you know, look at the possibilities of what this technology can do. We know that it has some environmental detriments in certain areas but if we use this tooling etc then we can you know use the benefits without needing the, the the downsides but i think we need to be able to tell that story correctly and that's a challenge nice well we have one uh we, that's that's great that's a really good call uh constant challenge uh but without getting into other stories uh we have a good question from the commons price channel and i'm going to only put 30 seconds on the clock for this one uh, and also kind of combine it with a, a question that we had written down as well. Uh, this is from Kojak. Uh, so there's a sense that this is a lot of like technology will solve and take care of everything. Um, but really, uh, it, it comes down to more than that. Like how does, how is your project uh, after launch, how is it going to bring in external revenue? Uh, is there uh, some way of being sustainable or self-reliant? And uh, you have to keep it really quick, 30 seconds, and please pass it uh, to someone when the buzzer goes off. Uh, we'll throw it to uh, Richard, uh, AI comments. Um, yeah, uh, so like we, we've already brought in some funding, you know, through grants, like that's how we've sustained ourselves so far. Um, and we hope that, you know, we can become sustainable through that, but also like um, potentially to by like generating um, AI applications that that bring in some value as well um, and so that's all coming out from outside of the ecosystem so um yeah Maybe perfect i can pass it do you want me to pass it to someone yeah okay how about uh john cool so two things um the way you ensure tech in this case has an impact is really good mrv we're working very heavily with some leading um, data scientists and people on the ground with communities in forests to create a kind of four-tiered MRV approach, which is people with phones, videos, cameras, um, Internet of Things, remote sensing, and satellite imagery to interpolate, are these on-chain activities having the impact we hope? And the second is the whole REFI ID is about a voluntary tax to create a constant stream of revenue through all the members into the DAO. And that revenue stream is imperative. There you go. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll pass it over to you, uh, Wonka. Um, yeah, we in sorry, we initially received um, funding from the DC, and uh, since our initial funding, our goal is to be self self, self sustainable. So um, our idea is to provide this service. Uh, to other DAOs, either um, as a third party for mediation and also for developing organizational um, competence. So um, we um, right now have Aragon as our first client and we aspire to continue um, offering this service. And yeah, I'll pass it to um, Grassroots. 
Thanks. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we offer a lot of services uh, to different sort of clients for like just auditing, voucher creation, training, um, you know, creating loyalty points and things. But um, for the, the DAO, I see that as something separate where it's like mostly focused on pulling in valuable assets into this and then creating liquidity. So I, I see a lot of revenue coming from this liquidity and then just the investment into commons. Nice. And then uh, last is Precious Plastic. Yeah, I think the, the cool thing about our project is that we have an existing economy. You know, there's, there's many millions of dollars that are being exchanged already in, in our ecosystem. Um, but we don't have a good mecha mechanism of capturing value yet. We have some, a few mechanisms. The, the main one is our marketplace. So we have a marketplace where you can buy and sell our machines, products, uh, molds. And we have a transaction fee on that, a 5% fee. So that's an existing revenue model that we can roll into the commons infrastructure. Then we also have a software platform where we could charge like a membership fee or something like that as well. But we have a lot of, I think, economic assets that we can play with. And I think that's kind of the cool and fun part. Nice. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, wow. Okay. So I'm just going to let you guys, I, the, I have more questions. I'm so, sorry, Boiler Rat. Thank you for asking the question in the Commons Price channel. Uh, but I, I really just want to let you guys have a free moment to just say what you, you want to say, like final thoughts. Why should people vote for you? This is the video that I'm going to DM to everybody, you know, and, and I think a lot of us are. So this is like final thoughts, like what, what makes your Commons uh, like really special and, and why, why is it going to be the best thing for the trusted seed uh, to uh, look at for the, for the next comments? Uh, let's, let's start with you, Will. Uh, final thoughts. Yeah. yeah, okay, well, it's just, it's been lovely to be here, guys. I think um, what I'm trying to describe is really just a system of uh, how to invest in various comments, which is in a way what you're already doing, Griff and the team, like this is an example of that. Um, I would like that example to like evolve into something where you know we're investing in precious plastic because of the ecosystem that they've created around some kind of token, right? And those tokens, in our case, like we're really passionate about credit obligations, the sort of form of credit money that we think is a better form of money and has different uh, uh, properties like demurrage and things like that. But it doesn't have to be just that. But I, I, I really want to see these ecosystems kind of tokenize in a way where they, they all start connecting and we create those DeFi pool between all of us. And as well, I want to see that happening on the ground in Kenya and Cameroon and South Africa and all this as well. So I just, I just want to see that network of all of us come together and uh, um, be really strong. And I, I don't necessarily think that that's our commons or something like this as grassroots economics. I think that's just like a really cool pool that we could all be part of. You know. Um, over. Nice. And I forgot to tell you, I was putting one minute on the clock, but uh, sorry about that. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it over to Precious Plastics. Uh, final thoughts. Why, should the, why does the Trusted Seed want to support your comments? So I think um, we, you know, we all see a lot of potential in blockchain technology, and it's been talked about for a long time. And yet we have never really see it, I feel like, transition into the physical world. And we are already operating in the physical world. We are actually helping clean up the environment right now. And if we can integrate that existing community with Web3, we can be a, such an amazing like, showcase for this technology and showing how coordination can change a social impact and environmental impact um, mission, like ending plastic waste. So like, that's what I think is so cool. It's like, how do we make this in the physical world real impact? Um, and, and I think Will is doing great stuff already with, with blockchain as well. Um, but it's like, that's a good example. Also, real world applications. Let's build more real world applications where we're moving, moving physical matter to improve the, improve the planet. So that's what, that's why I think uh, it'd be cool, cool to do this project together. Amen. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, why don't we throw it to Wonka? Yeah, I think that uh, DAOs are um, new institutions, arising institutions, and with DAOs we also have um, 
the 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 chance of not only solving uh, some of our economic um, issues that our normal institutions have, but we also can um, um, produce a more comprehensive culture. So um, we think that by uh, having conflict management as a basic infrastructure for DAOs, we are contributing to a more comprehensive culture, a less abusive culture, and that, that way we are um, also um, um, working towards improving the coordination in the world and um, realizing some of the of the goals that the DAOs and the projects have. Um, so, yeah, um, I will pass it to John. Cool. Thanks. Um, I'd be happy to see any of you awesome people take this. But for me, I really feel like ReFi is the movement that gives all of our aspirations a home. And I think ReFi is the movement that will also prove blockchain's killer use case, as you've said, um, real world, plan a positive impact. And how do you do that? I really do think DAOs need to become like nations and have voluntary taxes, in this case, consistent streams of revenue from all of its members in a very flexible and adaptive way to figure out how to, you know, issue that capital towards real world planet positive impact and to make sure that you can have a really strong set of values with lots of capital flowing in towards regeneration on the ground and the systems of measurement to feed back and figure out is this on-chain activity having the impact that we think it is? If so, let's, it, let's incentivize more of it. If not, let's push the incentives elsewhere. And so the primitives we're looking at are really trying to fulfill that. And uh, that's our hope. And yeah, great to be here. Thanks for this awesome journey. Super exciting. Perfect timing. Uh, do you, uh, let's throw it to AI comments. Yeah, take it, Richard. Cool. Yeah, so people often talk about how AI is one of the biggest threats that we face today and what we're seeing at the moment is an arms race between different centralized tech companies uh, who are playing zero-sum games and even between whole countries like the US and China. If we don't figure out how to do a uh, positive sum AI, it's going to inevitably lead to our destruction in my, in my honest opinion. Um, and so I think it's a really important problem to solve. And the other thing that people always talk about is like, you know, automation through AI and how it's going to lead to, you know, the loss of uh, many jobs. And I think uh, Token engineering and Web3 has a big part to play in this to figure out how to distribute the value uh, from different uh, AI uh, and also how to tax it and direct this value towards you know, people who may uh, be put out of jobs because of automation. So I honestly think it's a really, really important problem to solve. And I think uh, decentralized AI, uh, Web3 and token engineering can, can play a role. Amazing. You guys are so easy to facilitate. Let me just say thank you so much for being so like down to be on time and uh, let me interrupt you when I need to really appreciate it and you guys have incredible projects if you want to learn more about these projects there is a YouTube video for almost every project and I think every project will have one by the end of the weekend uh, and and uh, so you can go to the Commons prize like finalist YouTube playlist and see a, kind of a longer pitch from each group also we have another uh, kind of Commons prize voting party AMA type call this is going to be at 7 a.m west coast time or uh that's that is uh 10 a.m in new york and uh i think it's 4 p.m in Three. europe yeah what 4 p.m in europe uh so so yeah uh, definitely come to that on monday uh voting ends tuesday night so make sure to vote by tuesday night uh at uh, uh midnight new york time on tuesday and uh, let's see, anything else, Tam, that I should say is final thoughts? Oh, ask questions in the Commons Prize channel or in the GitHub issue. The GitHub issue is a great place for each project to uh, ask long form questions and get long form uh, answers. Uh, thank you all for participating in this uh, and we'll see you uh, uh, hopefully on Monday. Uh, bye everyone. Thank you guys. Have a great